Looking back at the 23 plus years that I've been attending Broadway theater, I think there has been a grand total of maybe two film to stage adaptations that I thought were excellent. And that was Mel Brooks's The Producers and John Waters' Hairspray. Sure, there's been decent to even moderately good ones like Moulin Rouge and Tootsie, but overall they've been more or less forgettable. Well, thanks to the Kirkpatrick brothers, uh, we have another, and though it isn't as excellent as the top two tier adaptations, it's still pretty entertaining. Hello, and welcome to episode 34 of One Man's Opinion, where I review professional theater on Broadway, national tours, and across Connecticut. Today, I will be reviewing Mrs. Doubtfire, the new Broadway musical by Wayne and Carrie Kirkpatrick, directed by Jerry Zachs, running at the Stephen Sondheim Theater at 124 West 43rd Street in New York City. Now, let's make this perfectly clear from the start. Mrs. Doubtfire, the musical, is not as good as Mrs. Doubtfire, the movie, and frankly... The movie's too high a bar to clear. No one will ever be Robin Williams. No one will ever be Sally Field. No one will ever be Harvey Firestein. They are and were singular artists with so much talent that they shouldn't even be compared. But the creators and artists of this adaptation overall do an exceptional job in giving an entertaining and overall enjoyable show. The adaptation is overall faithful. Rob McClure plays Daniel Hillard the struggling actor man-child married with three children. His inability to behave like an adult and accept the responsibilities of a father and husband leads his, his wife Miranda Hillard, played by Jen Gambatis, to divorce him and win custody of the children in court with limited visitation. Devastated, Daniel, with the help from his brother Frank Hillard, played by Brad Oscar, and Frank's husband Andre Mayim, played by J. Harrison Key, disguises himself as a British nanny to secretly spend time with the kids and hopefully win his family back, even though Miranda has moved on with a new lover in Stuart Dunmire, played by Mark Evans, and Daniel has to hide his scheme from a hilarious and awesome charity angel Dawson who plays Wanda Selner, the social worker assigned to his case. The story is almost beat for beat the same as the movie. The pool scene is scrapped for deliriously ridiculous fashion show and gym scene, which covers many of the same points, though. Otherwise, it's almost the same. The role of Mr. Lundy, originally played by Robert Prosky, the television studio producer who gives Daniel a chance at a new career, has been replaced by a female producer, Janet Lundy, played by Jody Kimura, which is nothing people should be upset about. Kimura creates a whole new character, and she is wonderfully funny. All the similarities bear the question, why see the musical when the movie is readily available? And that's a good question. Uh... But I ask you this in response. Why watch a movie when you can read the book it was adapted from? Adaptations, for better or worse, bring a different experience to the piece. Wayne and Carrie Kirkpatrick's score is delightful, bright, and energetic. The design is great, and McClure, though he isn't Robin Williams, gives a brilliant, high-energy performance with commitment to the absolute insanity of the show's premise. Credit is due to costume designer Catherine Zuber, hair designer David Brian Brown, makeup and prosthetics designer Tommy Kurzman, and their teams who had devised a costume for McClure where he can transition into Mrs. Doubtfire in literally seconds, and many of the changes happen on stage in front of the audience, which is both daring and fantastic to watch. The one real letdown is Gambatis as Miranda. Her voice is great, but her acting is stiff and rigid. Miranda is a career woman, yes, and sometimes single-minded, but she also very much loves her kids and wants what she feels is best for them. So I wish there was a little bit more warmth and love coming from her performance. The kids are good. Uh, and the real breakthrough is Maria Delano, who played the eldest child, Lydia Hillard, the night I was there. She's listed as the understudy. Making her Broadway debut under studying Lydia, she was on the night that I was in attendance, and she was wonderful. She had so much vulnerability and depth, expressing fear of the breaking of her family unit and mixed emotions for her parents and their respective points of view. 
one additional note that I would be remiss in omitting. When seeing Mrs. Doubtfire, pay attention at the top of the show for a subtle little tribute to Robin Williams. It's heartwarming, and I'm glad they included it. And that's One Man's Opinion of Mrs. Doubtfire, currently on Broadway at the Stephen Sondheim Theater. Be sure to leave your opinion in the comments below. If you're interested in tickets, I'll leave a link in the description. If you like my review, be sure to hit the like button, share it on your own social media, and subscribe to follow me for future reviews. Speaking of Stephen Sondheim, my next review will be the highly anticipated revival of his musical company, starring Katrina Lank and Patti Lapone. So until next time, I'll see you at the theater.